Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. Now I'm just going to go over and make sure we're sharing this online. Yes, you see it. It's right. We're coming to you from the chapel, and there's a reason for that. Folks, we are just uh, we're sharing this online. We're just going to share yes, this over. for a second. Excellent. Wonderful. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Come on in. I'm hoping we actually have more people here. We had uh, a bit of an incident this morning, and it's been an interesting morning, to say the least. And we had a pretty major water leak um, that has affected our sacred space and uh, some of the classrooms. Uh, and so we, we got here as uh, quickly as we could. And uh, we've got the people here uh, that are working on it. But unfortunately, we've had to shut down our water in the building. And uh, we've decided that our, uh, our in-person service that uh, is scheduled for 10 o'clock, we are actually going to have to cancel that because uh, that those are the rules. If if water is shut off in a building, then you cannot have um, in-person service. So it's been sorry. We're all Mary Ann and Major and I are kind of like a little frazzled, um, but we are uh, uh, getting ourselves back together. But literally, we've been going, going, going uh, right up to this moment. So uh, that is what go is going on. So we want to make sure uh, that you know that our in-person service at 10 o'clock. Um, is at this point it is canceled uh, as far as our youth programs tonight we're gonna let you know where we stand on that um, you know we'll see how the uh, repairs go and the things that are happening but uh, that is what's going on it's been a very interesting morning thus far but we, of course the way that we operate is we, the minute, minute we got in, we just brought the stuff in here into our chapel. So we're really hoping that you all just enjoy uh, the service. We're gonna go ahead with a full service, uh, which makes me happy. I'm glad, Major, I'm glad we continued the virtual because we wouldn't have this up, right, Marianne? Yes, yes. I mean, the fact is when we made that decision, well, it's just for something like this. So we're just watching you come in. Good morning to Beverly Newman. Good morning to Jerry Utley. Good morning to all of our friends. Come on in. I'm hoping my mommy comes. Did I just call her mommy? Yes, I did. 53 years old, I call her mommy. But uh, certainly, I'm not sure if she will because she's still in the hospital. We want to continue to pray for my mother, who has been a faithful uh, online virtual service person. There's Marty. Hello, Marty. Um, so my mother, who uh, hopefully will get out of the hospital next week, if you've been following it, we want to keep lifting her up in prayer. She's had some uh, uh, issues um, that they're uh, working on. Um, your, mommy is here. your mommy is here. Hi, Marilyn. Mom, are you, are you in the hospital right now, right in, watching a service? Well, Mom, I've got to say one word to you. Turn up the volume in the hospital because we're going to worship Jesus with you. Hello, Candy McMillan. Hello, everybody. Look, everybody got the message that, uh, that there is no in-person today at 10 o'clock because we're getting a whole group. So come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Now, one of the things that I love about this is for Major and Mary Ann and I. It's like old times. That's right. This reminds me a little bit of March 2020, it's except a... <laughs> our video is much clearer. Our, our sound is much better. And, uh, and we've no got, masks. and no masks. We, <laughs> we have this beautiful view. Look, I can even show you how beautiful this is. You know, if I do this, if I did it like that, then I'd have to talk to you like this, which I guess isn't the worst thing, right? Hello, everybody. <laughs> okay, but that is our beautiful backdrop at the Croc Center. If you don't get a chance to see how wonderful it is, it's so wonderful and beautiful. But I'll bring this down to the level that can catch Major Klamowski. Maybe I can even go, you know, and, and me. Be, you know, not just you, Major. I wasn't making a comment on, you know, size or anything like that and height. See, because you could be out here. I should shut my mouth on that. Listen! 
It's been crazy. But we're going to worship the Lord together. How, who's ready? Who's ready? Woohoo! Woohoo! Me too. <laughs> so I'm going to go up there and we're going to roll with this. And you know what? Time, you know, whatever. We're not, we're not in a rush. Oh, if the him. spirit moves. <laughs> wait a second. Mary Ann just said, don't tell him that. Don't tell him that. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, I'm going to get you. Beverly, we love you. Everybody come on in. We're going to sing together. What? Ah! It's been so crazy. The most important thing is our prayer requests. Now, I know, Beverly, you sent me a private note, but maybe you can update uh, Marianne as far as the prayer requests that you sent to me because I caught that late. But if you have a prayer request right now, I want you to go ahead and you can send that to Marianne. She's right here. Oh, beautiful. And uh, so Marianne, we're watching that. Uh, anybody else has a prayer request? If you want to make one public, go ahead. Or you can send a private message to Marianne. She's right here. I can almost put my, look at, get your hand. Look at that. Look. And, see, look at that. She's right there. That was weird. <laughs> I snorted. <laughs> so anyway, go ahead and send your prayer request. We love you all. We are going to have a wonderful virtual meeting together, just like the old times. Major's looking down. That means be quiet, Billy. All right. Let's worship the Lord together. All right. Major gave me that, that look, that classic look. Oh, let's worship. We haven't even tested out the mics or anything. I hope it's not going to be too booming. If it is too booming, let us know. We'll figure out a way to turn it down. Let's just pray. show all we need are some couches in that part and sit around but uh praise the lord it has been a wonderful time of reopening slowly at the crock and so many wonderful things have been happening i really wanted to take a moment 
to, uh, to, to just celebrate one young person at the Croc Center. That is Matthew Ashcraft. Now, Matthew, as you remember the other day, played for us here at the Croc. Played for us here at the Croc Center and Callie led worship. I don't know if you remember seeing that online. But Matthew performed in the territorial piano competition for Star Search. Now, this is a big deal for me because I was also the winner of the first territorial Star Search in 1985. So Matthew and uh, I... We have something uh, uh, that we both share now, but it's not about me, it's about Matthew, because Matthew performed, and guess what? He won first place! So everybody, let's go, we're doing a little dance for Matthew Ashcraft. Matthew. Matthew, Matthew! You know, and the thing is, we're definitely going to have to bring Matthew back to play for us. Yeah. Now, and I, you know also, Matthew is uh, taught by the person who taught me. And we're hoping that's going to start training Callie, the great, the one and only Donna Peterson. Yeah. So uh, we want to thank Donna Peterson. We love the Ashcraft, but today we celebrate Matthew Ashcraft. We're so thrilled for you, Matthew. We love you here. You're going to do wonderful things for Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, is that rain that's happening? Can you guys hear the rain? This has been quite a, <laughs> quite a day, <laughs> but we're bringing Jesus on down. It's raining, right? It's rain, rain, the Holy Spirit. Yes. So look, uh, wonderful things are happening. We are planning on having our in-person uh, youth group. We've got Jacob here. Uh, thanks for being here, Jacob. He kind of saved the day. We've had him out busy making phone calls to everybody about our in-person. But our plan as right now is uh, Major Annalise is going to be here too because hopefully we're going to play a live Among Us game in the field house and we're also going to hear a word from Jacob, a word from Scripture, and a word from the Lord with our young people. We had 10 kids show up last week for our first gathering and we already know there's going to be maybe 15 to 20 kids tonight. So you can be praying for that as we gather together, bringing back all of these youth programs that didn't exist before. Really, women's ministry is going great. Uh, day camp starts tomorrow. Day, day camp starts tomorrow here at the Croc Center. Summer food, summer and the summer service. food program where, you know, that's always my favorite. I loved that last yeah. year where it's thematic. So it's summer, you know, the food program, people drive up. And if it's Christmas, we dress like Santa Claus, if it's et cetera. Easter, Major's going to put on the Easter Bunny costume. So it's going to be wonderful. <laughs> he doesn't know that yet. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Things are going great. We love you. That's all. Who's next? I know I need some water. Good morning. We are here to worship a remarkable God. The love of God welcomes us. The grace of Christ awaits us. The joy of the Spirit enfolds us. Don't come as slaves. Come as the truly free. Don't come as petitioners. Come as those who are already heard. Don't come as interlopers. Come as invited guests. Don't come as the outsiders. Come as much wanted children. The love of God emboldens us. The grace of Christ redeems us. The joy of the Spirit uplifts us. Come as the joyful, come as the eager, come as the thankful. Come as the recipients of amazing grace. The love of God overflows our hearts. The grace of Christ liberates our spirits. The joy of the spirits sings in our minds. Good morning. <clears throat> I was listening to a gospel song this morning speaking of the Holy Spirit and, and asking the Lord to send the rain. <laughs> and uh, he certainly he certainly is this morning. Um, he's sending water in many ways, I guess, as we uh, work through some of the uh, difficulties that um, we have. But we're so glad that God is, uh, has blessed us and that God continues to bless us. So as we go to him in prayer this morning, mm -hmm. let us uh, pray that his Holy Spirit will move amongst us, that his Holy Spirit will be poured out 
uh, into us, that uh, we will get a fresh and renewal, renewal of our hearts and minds. We um, need to, re we have some very special prayer requests this morning, and uh, we continue to pray uh, for these folks. And um, as we mention them, um, please be aware that um, their, their, need, their needs are great before, before God. Uh, Sandy W., um, and uh, we, we just uh, pray for Sandy and, and Commissioner Marilyn. We're glad that she's on the mend. Uh, we're praying for Donna M. and, and Jerry Otley's dad and, and Terry and, and Beverly Newman. And um, we just got uh, Cheryl Pence. Cheryl Pence, we need to pray for um, Laura C. and um, Betty B. Uh, we uh, pray for the, we want to pray for these folks um, and uh, pray for God's healing. Pray for God's peace. Pray for God's um, uh, comfort to be upon them this this moment, and uh, and as they as some re, as they recover, um, may God um, may God wrap His arms around them. So as we go to God's throne in prayer this morning, let's uh, pray that um, He would be glorified because it's all about Him. It's all about Him. Let's pray together. Our Father God, we humble ourselves before you and we thank you father because you are the you are the god who sends the rain you are the god that sends the sunshine you are the god who is in control of all things and oh god help us to see you in everything help us oh god to see you in broken water pipes for whatever reason oh god we don't know what you do and there's and you will work out all things for good and we thank you for that. We thank you, Father, for you send the rain of healing upon us, Lord, and we thank you. And we pray, Lord, for those who we've mentioned this morning. We pray for Sandy and, and Marilyn and Donna and, and, and Jerry and Terry and Beverly and Laura and Betty. We, we lift these folks up to you, O oh God, and we pray for your healing upon them. We pray for your strength upon them. We pray for your peace upon them, O oh God. We pray for Jesus. We pray for Jesus to be enhanced in their lives, O oh God, that, that, that um, Jesus would be magnified and, and, and that Jesus, that Jesus would be, uh, for he is the answer, and that they would find the strength and the comfort in him because it's in him alone, Lord, that we have everything and that you provide everything. May he be manifested in each of our lives. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity and this time and that even though things are, are, are switched around and changed, oh God, we can still serve you. We can still worship you. No matter what, we worship you for you are worthy. You are worthy of our glory. You are worthy of our worship. You are worthy of our service. You, oh God, are worthy of our love. And we pray, oh God, that we would love you. We pray, oh God, that you will, you will help us to love you, to serve you, and to worship you with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, with all of our souls, and with all of our strength. We, we know, Lord, that there are many families who are suffering Lord, uh, the, the loss of loved ones. And we pray, Lord, that you would bring comfort and strength to them, Lord, and that they might, they might uh, sense your, your, your loving arms around them, O oh God, as you, as you help them in dealing with the loss of a loved one, Lord, but also encouraging them with the hope of knowing that this isn't the end, but, it's, but, but death is the beginning, the beginning of life with you, of, of eternity, with you and we have that hope and we have that 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 promise oh god help us lord to live by your promises help us lord to know your promises help us lord to be strengthened and encouraged by your promises help us lord to strengthen and encourage one another help us lord to uh to be there for one another help us oh god to just be jesus to a to a um to a world oh god that um that is, in, that is searching, searching for answers. Oh God, may they find it in our love for each other. May they find it in our love for Jesus. May they find the answers in Jesus, for he is what they need, for he is everything, and he is all that we need. 
We pray, oh God, that your blessing would continue to be upon us this morning. Bless us, Lord, as we pray and as we sing and as we just worship you and as we as we uh, um, share your word together, oh God. May our hearts and our minds and, and, and our ears and our and our eyes be open to you, O oh God, and may your spirit be poured into us, O oh God. May we, um, may we see you, may we hear you, may we know you, may we trust you, may we have a vision of what you have for us. We pray for the center. We pray, Lord, for the many um, issues and difficulties, Lord, and, and and what's going on here, Lord, and we just pray that, oh God, you will work all these things out so that we can continue to serve. And as we begin this new week with day camp and young people uh, here, Lord, and the young people tonight, and oh God, there's just so much, and and we thank you, oh God, for the for the people and the and the and the um, the abilities and the expertise that you give to all those who are serving you, Lord, and we thank you for that. And, and we just pray, oh God, in, in everything, may you be glorified, for you are worthy. And we ask all of these things in your precious and wonderful name. Amen. And amen. Yeah. Now the sun's out. Amazing. <laughs>
going to sing an oldie now. But it's a great song. Beautiful song. It's victory in Jesus. Now you can clap your hands on this if you want. I heard an old, old story. Our Savior came from glory. How we gave his life. after mine and learn from those who follow our example. For I have told you often before, and I say it again with tears in my eyes, that there are many who, whose conduct shows they are really enemies of the cross of Christ. They are headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite. They brag about shameful things and they think only about this life here on earth. But we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives and we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our savior. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own, 
using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. Victory in Jesus. For um, <clears throat> those of us who um, aren't gifted musically, and especially in the um, the gift of the gift of singing, um, and Donna, you and I can relate to this certainly. <laughs> but that last verse of that song, in some sweet day I'll sing up there the songs of victory. Amen. Um, that excites me because <laughs> that, because then I'll be able to sing and carry a tune. And um, those, those of us who, and there are many who um, fall into that category, we can look forward to that moment. Let's uh, pray together. Our Father God, we thank you because great is your faithfulness. We thank you, Father, because there is victory in Jesus. And although, Lord, we, 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 we look around us and we, we sometimes feel defeated, we need not be because there is victory in Jesus. You will win in the end, that you will bring justice, that you will bring an end to the, to the corruption, that you will bring an end to the evil. You will bring an end to everything that is not of you. And we look forward to that. And Father, we know that um, even though that, that, that's, that, that ending is in the future, uh, right now we can have the victory. Right now, we can be overcomers. Right now, we can, be, um, we, can, we can be invincible because of Jesus and because of what he's done for us. And we thank you for that, oh God. And we thank you because you are faithful. We thank you, Father, because you are God and there is no other. And, as, and Father, as we share together this morning, may our hearts, may our minds, may our eyes, may our ears, be open to receive what you have for us. For, oh God, we need to know, we need to remember, we need to always, always, always know that in you, in you, in Jesus, we have the victory. We can be comforted. We have everything that we need. And so we entrust it all to you, oh God, and pray your spirit would move and would touch each one of us. Thank you, Father. For we pray and ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. But we are citizens of heaven. We are citizens of heaven. Now, Paul wasn't talking about the future. Paul was talking about then. He was telling the Philippians that we are citizens of heaven now where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and we are eagerly awaiting for him to return as our Savior. We need to be citizens of heaven and eagerly waiting for him to return. We should be looking for the return of Jesus. We should be looking for our, our, our redemption to come in, in, the, for, in, in, the, in the revelation of Jesus. But for now, Paul says, he takes our weak mortal bodies and changes them into glorious bodies like his own, using the same power with which he will bring everything, everything under, under his control. Sometimes we tend to look around and we say, and we see the, um, the, the craziness and we see the uh, a world unraveling and we wonder and we 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 sometimes fall into a, oh what is going to happen but no this says that god through the same power that he saved us with through the same power that he transformed us is going to bring everything under his control for we are citizens of heaven I don't know how many of you are aware or have watched or have read uh, C.S. Lewis's books, The Chronicles of Narnia. 
What a wonderful series that is. And I would challenge you to not only read those books, but there are a couple of movies about the, um, that, are, that are taken from his books. Um, the one that I think of right away is The Witch, The Robe, and The, war, and the Wardrobe. But, but in the Chronicles of Narnia series, C.S. Lewis makes a keen statement about the way we live. He says, whatever realm our minds are immersed, it shapes the decisions we make and the influence we have here. Think about that. Whatever realm our minds are immersed in, <clears throat> in other words, whatever we think about all the time, wherever our mind, whatever our minds are immersed in, and if our minds are immersed in the world, if our minds are immersed in our problems, if our minds are immersed of, uh, in, the, uh, in the darkness, then our, our, it's going to shape the decisions that we make and the influence we have. As we talked about last week, we often don't live like overcomers. We are overcomers. The scripture, Paul just said, we are citizens of heaven and we, <clears throat> and we are, and, and God has taken our weak mortal bodies and changed them into glorious bodies like his own, using the same power. We don't often live like overcomers. We don't often live victoriously. We allow the world to have too much influence in our lives. <clears throat> and and, and so we don't live like overcomers. And if we are, if you are familiar with the Narnia story, that you will note that the children spent a lifetime as kings and queens in Narnia. They spent, a, uh, they spent, they were kings and queens in Narnia, and they were almost, com they almost completely had forgotten and forget and for, forgotten their formal lives in England. When we are, are living in the realm of God, when we are living in Christ, when we are living in in, in heavenly realms, <clears throat> we need we tend to and we need to forget our former lives. We need to have a throne room mentality. But when the children in the story, when the children return to their old life through the wardrobe, their memories of Narnia fail. Their memories of Arnie, Narnia left almost completely forgetting their former life. Or, but when they returned, they, their, 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 their memories of Narnia faded. And that's what happens to us sometimes. We get so comfortable in the world. We get so comfortable in this realm. We get so comfortable in this evil, evil realm that we forget that the memories of who we are in Christ fades. When the world infiltrates us, we tend to forget who we are in Christ. We are overcomers. We are victorious. We are invincible. But when we allow the world to infiltrate us, when we allow ourselves to be too comfortable in this world, when we allow ourselves to focus in on, 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 on the world and what's going on, our memories of, or, or our thoughts of who we are in Christ fade. We are overcomers, we are victorious, and we are invincible. As believers, as believers, we are already citizens of heaven. But we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, Paul says. We are already citizens of heaven. We are already resurrected with Christ. We are already transformed uh, from the old to the new, and we are seated with Christ in his position and in his power. The question that we need to ask ourselves is, do we live this way? 
Do we live as citizens of heaven? Do we live in new resurrected bodies? Do we live as, as being transformed? Do we live as if we were seated with Christ? Do we live in his position, in his power? Do we have a throne room mentality? For a people in such a high state as we are, we sometimes live awfully powerless lives. We sometimes live awfully defeated lives. Why? Why? It's not because we lack the power. The Holy Spirit gives us the power. It's not because we lack the position, because we are children of God. We are princesses and prince, princesses and princes of God. And it's not because we lack the ability, because Jesus said that we would, be, we would do what he did and more. Because our ability is not in us, it's in him and his power and his position. We have the presence of Jesus. No longer do we need to live powerless lives. No longer do we need to live defeated. But we have the presence of Jesus. The question is, do we allow him to be manifested through us and in us? Are we surrendered enough to him? Or to go back to what we've been talking about, the trouble is, the trouble is, the power of the resurrection itself works within us. The power of the resurrection itself works within us. Paul said in Ephesians, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. We need to meditate on a verse like that, 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 we, will, that we pray that we will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. And this is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. And Paul would later would tell us that we are not only citizens of heaven, but again, that we're resurrected with Christ, we're transformed, and we're seated with him. That was Ephesians 1, 19 and, 19 and 20, if, you're, if you want to look that up. And the other verse is Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than, we, than, than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work in us. That power that is in work, that is at work within us. Our tendency, however, is to forget who we are. Our tendency is is to let the world, let Satan rob us of the knowledge of who we are. We don't lose who we are, but we, 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 we tend to forget or not have that front consciousness of who we are in Christ. And so we tend then to live powerless lives and we tend then to be defeated. We live as citizens of earth Try, trying to draw on heaven's resources rather than as citizens of heaven pouring its resources into earth. We need constant reminders of our position. We need to live as citizens of heaven pouring its resources into the earth. We need a throne room mentality we need a throne room mentality we need to be outposts of heaven we need to be outposts of heaven we need to immerse our minds in the things of heaven 
Paul said in Colossians 3, 1 and 2, he said, Since then you have been raised with Christ. We talked about being resurrected with him. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Again, we need to have a throne room mentality. We need to be outposts of heaven. We need to set our hearts and our minds on things above, not on things of the earth, not on things of the earth. Our minds are immersed in the things of the world. Our minds tend to fall into the, into the, into the things of this world. We tend to be immersed in politics. We tend to be immersed in, 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 in security. We tend to be immersed, immersed in, in pleasures, and we tend to be immersed in ourselves. When God is saying to us that if we, we are resurrected and we are transformed, that we need, to be, we need to set our hearts and our minds on things above, not on earthly things. We, when we live as citizens of, the, of earth, trying to draw on heaven's resources, our statement, our starting assumption is, that, is one of that we lack things, that we are in poverty, that we are, in, we are dissatisfied. And if we believe that we, that we're, if, if we believe the lies that say, oh, you, don't, you lack the ability to do that. God wants you to do that, but you can't do that because you lack the ability. Or you, you, um, you, you know, God hasn't blessed you and, and you, you live in poverty. You don't have what everyone else has. Um, and you become dissatisfied. Oh, I wish I had that. I wish I, had, I needed this. And if we believe this, we begin to feel that way. And we will live that way. And we will function that way. And everything about us will be that way. And it's no wonder we are powerless. It's no wonder we're defeated. It's no wonder we're discouraged. But... This is not God's description of us. This is not God's description of who we are or where we sit. Show me, show me in the scripture where God says that we, that we lack anything. Show me in the scripture where God says that we live in poverty. Show me in scripture where God says that, that, we are, that he will not provide everything that we need. No, God's description of us is that we are seated with Christ, that we are rich, that we, are, we lack nothing, and that we are satisfied in Him, in Him. Stop listening to the lies. We can be energized by the assurance that we are overcomers, Romans 8.37. That we are victorious in Christ. It's no longer I who liveth, but Christ who liveth in me. Even with all, even in, in our losses, God works out everything for good, Romans 8.28. We have access to the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 2, 16. God himself is at work within you, Philippians 2, 13. And much, much more. In fact, I read this morning that God wants to, wants to fill us with himself, that we have the fullness of God. That should be mind-boggling to us. We have the fullness of God. Why should we not live with a throne room mentality? Why should we ever be defeated? Why should we ever be discouraged? Why should we, we, we ever live powerless? We have Christ within us. We are called to be outposts on earth. We are called to be outposts of heaven on earth. Excuse me. We are called to be, have a throne room mentality. We are called to be a connecting point between the two realms. Again, are we? Are we? Are we? Again, as believers, 
we are citizens of heaven, resurrected, transformed, and seated with Christ in his power and in his position. We need to be outposts of heaven. We need to be a throne room. We need to have a throne room mentality. And we need to be the connecting point between the two realms. We need to anchor ourselves in heaven and live and pray and serve and speak with and in the power of heaven, the strength of heaven, the confidence of, of, of heaven. Or we know, I know, I know, we have the power of heaven through the Holy Spirit. We have the strength of Jesus. We have the confidence of God himself. We being a light in a dark world. We being a light in a dark world. Pouring heaven's resources into it. What resources? God's wisdom. God's hope. God's joy. God's encouragement. God's peace. God's love. That's what we need to be pouring into, into our world. That's what we need to be pouring into this dark world. We need to be those lights that break through. May we know where we live and who our Father is and how rich we are. May you and I, may all of us as God's children know, know where we live our Father is and how rich we are. May we have a throne room mentality as we live in this realm, but our hearts and our minds are in the realm of heaven. Lord, make Calvary real to me. Lord, make Calvary real to me. Open my eyes to see what? To see the victory. Not the defeated. Not the, not the darkness. But to see the victory in Christ for me. Lord, make Calvary real to me. Calvary looked dark, but we know. We know that it was the beginning of the end of darkness. It was the end of sin. It was the end of unforgiveness. It was the end of despair. It was victory in Jesus. Lord, make Calvary real to me. Won't you sing that chorus with me this morning as we, as we bring our, our service to a close? <coughs> may we remember that we need to live with a throne room mentality. Victorious, overcomers, all power in God. We need to set our hearts and our minds on the things of God. Lord, may Calvary real to me. May that be your prayer this morning. Lord, Lord be
this be the prayer of our hearts this morning, that the victory that Christ won on the cross is our victory, that it is no longer I who liveth, but Christ who lives in us. Oh God, may we understand the great and in the incredible power that you have for those of us who believe in you, that this, that, that, that mighty power, that mighty power that raised Christ from the dead, that, that, that took him from the cross and, and raised him from the dead and seated him with you, that we are seated with him. We are seated with you. Oh God, may we not be discouraged. May we not be disappointed. May we, may we not, we are we can be disappointed but oh god may we not be discouraged may we not be defeated but may we be victorious in jesus may we be victorious in jesus oh god help us to set our hearts and our minds on you to do away with earthly things and to be the light to be the um to to be the resources for for from heaven to earth thank you oh god we pray and ask these things in your wonderful name. Amen. God bless you. If God has spoken to you this week, this morning, um, don't hesitate to call or, or let me know. Um, I'd be happy to pray with you. Um, but live victoriously. Live in the position that God has placed us with. For Jesus is, it will, it will bring the victory. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much, Major, for that wonderful word from the Lord today. You know, friends, that this is a very special day today uh, in that it is in the Salvation Army world here in the Eastern Territory, our commissioning, or I should say the other way around, our ordination and commissioning. Annalise and I had the pleasure of serving on the training school staff for seven years in the Western Territory, and it was always our great pleasure after training very hard with uh, young seminary students, cadets, we call them, um, for two years. It was always hard to say goodbye to them, but also to wish them well on their journey in the Lord as Salvation Army officers. Today you have that opportunity. Actually, because of what's happened this morning, uh, you know, God can redeem it for you because at 10 o'clock, if you go to saconnects.org, you'll be able to tune in live to the ordination service of the cadets at the School for Officers training. And they're gonna have a wonderful service. I know I'll be tuning in now because we have the opportunity to do that. And I'll share that link on our Croc Facebook page mm -hmm. and also our Croc Instagram, and I'll share it on my own Facebook page. So you'd have a little time here to get some coffee um, and you can tune in and watch the Salvation Army in its most unique fashion of ordination. All denominations have their own unique way of doing things. I am biased, but I'll say the Salvation Army has one of the most beautiful expressions of ordination and certainly the afternoon commissioning. Every year while we were in the West, we would sing one song to when we would send off the cadets. And it is a Salvation Army cornerstone that we sing uh, after the cadets are, are commissioned and sent off. Most people sing this song. We're going to sing it today because we're celebrating all of you cadets at the training college. And of course, all of those officers that have gone through this, I'm sure you'll sing it loud with me too. That we go in the strength of the Lord. These words matter. In paths that he has marked for our feet. I'll follow the light of his word, nor shrink from the dangers I meet. His presence my steps shall attend, his fullness my wants shall supply. Amen. On him, till my journey shall end, my unwavering faith shall rely. Do you all say praise the Lord to that? Let's all stand, brother. You don't have to stand if nobody's here to stand, but um, you know what? You can stand, except you, Mom. You can't stand in the hospital. <laughs> Sing with me. If you can laugh, you can clap your hands.
You know what? I'm just getting rusty. But do you know? I'm old. Hey, all, we love you. Don't forget, go to saconnects.org black, backslash live. Um, or just or go to SA. SA Connects Org on the Facebook page. On the Facebook page. You can find that there. You're not going to want to miss it. Okay, and it's really a wonderful, wonderful thing. And it always plucks my heartstring to watch these cadets be ordained and then commissioned. Very exciting. So you don't want to miss that. God bless you all. Thank you for sticking with us. I just got an update during the sermon that they are on top of it. It's, gonna, it's a mess, but they're going to get this all cleaned up. So praise the Lord for that. We love you. I love you, Mom. And I'm so glad the fever is broken. I just read that there. We're continuing to pray for you, Commissioner Marilyn Francis, and of course, the old man, Commissioner Dad <laughs> Francis. We love you. Thank you for taking care of mom during these days. God bless you all. And we will see you again next week. An in-person service will happen next week. Okay? Oh, it's Father's Day next week. We have to do something special. Do we give roses to fathers? Probably not, but we'll figure out something. Wallet's it is full of money. a wallet full of money. There you go. <laughs> a new lawnmower, a new tie, some socks. <laughs> Love you all. Bye. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.